What's going on, everybody? It's Frito here for your Overwatch, and today we have another action-packed news roundup. So strap in as we get right into it. The free weekend is live right now, so if you don't already own Overwatch on any of its platforms, PC, PS4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, question mark? No, not coming out yet. Get in on that. Just pop in Overwatch Free Weekend into the Google machine and you can figure it out from there. If you are on the consoles though, know that you do need either the Xbox Live Gold subscription or PlayStation Plus in order to get access to the online servers to play the game. But on to other news. The 3v3 elimination game mode changes have had a positive reception. I gave it a glowing review in my video covering the strategies of how to play the game mode. And I myself think that it would work well as a competitive mode either with its own ranked playlist somehow incorporated into the ranked playlist as it is now. However, that might necessitate some options in terms of what maps you can select, which is the thing in other competitive games, mind you. You can at least ban out some maps that you don't want to play in the competitive rotation, or at the very least, see it get played at the highest level of play in the land format. That's where I think it's really compelling, but this forum post from Captain Planet basically agrees with that, saying that with the lockout changes, now every hero is viable, seeing that you can create sub-strategies among each round. Incredibly compelling game mode. Don't get me started or I'll make an entirely separate commentary all about it. Go check out my 3v3 video for more information about that. But Jeff Kaplan responds, glad you're liking it. We will consider creating a competitive version. I think it's still a little too early to tell if the mode is stable and balanced enough to host a competitive version. We're keeping a really close eye on it and playing it ourselves. Well, to that point, whenever the developers use the word stable, I think that means in relation to bugs. Because of course, if ranking is on the line, the stakes are much more raised when it comes to malfunctions with the game. So if there is any bugs to be had and the game is either prone to either crashes or manipulations or whatever can happen with the function of the game, they want to make sure that all those things are pretty much perfect before they launch it into competitive. But also, is it balanced enough? And although I did give a few small nitpicks that I would like to see changed in the 3v3 mode, for the most part, it's structured in a way where it can't be unbalanced because there's no way to exploit out a dominant strategy, really. So at the very least, whatever strategies you can come up with, the enemy team will get a chance to use that against you without you being able to do it yourself. So that alone makes it have a natural kind of balance to it. I think we can nitpick how many rounds there are, how long it takes the objective to spawn, all sorts of little things, but on the whole, I love the mode and I want to play it ranked. In some cases, it's even better than the current ranked mode, which is built in such a way that kind of requires you to play in a small queue. Well, if small queue is what the ranking system wants from you, why not have a mode that's dedicated to a small group of players so we don't get into a lot of these other problems that come into effect of having to play with random teammates in order for the ranking system to accurately work. Moving on, there's other interesting posts that Jeff Kaplan responded to today. Matchmaking is unfair, says Sniff Smurf. And this player's complaint is that they go into quick play in order to have a good time, yet for some reason is getting matched up against much higher rated players. Now, of course, when we use the term rating, What's being referred to is skill rating, as in the rank that is publicly displayed. Of course, there's an MMR that we've discussed multiple times. It's the hidden metric behind the scenes that is the actual expectation of where you are as a player mechanically and skill-wise. So... Either way, those are two different things regardless, but Jeff Kaplan explains even more and says, Quick Play and Competitive have separate internal matchmaking ratings. Sometimes competitive players play off heroes for practice in Quick Play, causing their matchmaking rating to be lower in Quick Play than it is in Competitive. Also, in Competitive, we will force very highly skilled players to wait much longer than we do in Quick Play. This is good feedback, though. We'll continue to look into issues like this and see if there are improvements to be made. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section down below. When you play Quick Play, does it seem like you're getting some pretty difficult matches? Are you playing up against players that are beyond what you think you should be matched against? Because debatably, Quick Play, I think at least, doesn't have to go too hard on this skill-based matchmaking route. I understand why they do it in order for the games to feel more fair. But in some ways, the random elements of teams being unbalanced can at least give you the opportunity to have some games where you're the higher skilled player and other games where your team just gets wrecked. But that's going to happen anyway, even if the matchmaking system is doing its best to make the games balanced. What does happen is if the matchmaking system tries its best to make balanced teams on both sides on quick play, judging based upon MMR, is when you come up to situations like this, where players who are able to really drag down their quick play MMR by not really playing their best heroes, 
which of course is kind of the point of quick play, isn't it? To develop the heroes that you don't play in competitive. But in by doing so, they easily on a whim can switch to their other heroes and then completely unbalance the matchmaking system anyway, giving us the same random effect that you were going to have if you didn't try to meticulously do the skill-based matchmaking approach. Ultimately, every system has its flaws, guys. I think that's the one lesson that we could take today, that no matter what we go with, you're going to get a short end of a stick at some point. And as a bit of a side note, one strategy that I think I'm going to utilize much more frequently going into Season 5 is the custom game scrim route. Matchmaking and quick play are great, but it can be even better to create a sub-community among friends that play scrims in a more organized environment that really removes a lot of the X-factors and lets you get down to just enjoying Overwatch and practicing it in a way that is among peers with like-minded approaches to the game. So like if you decide, hey guys, I want to play Hanzo today, well, your friends are going to have to be cool with that in your pickup game, otherwise they might unfriend you anyway. You can use social media resources like our Discord, for instance, which is linked in the description of every video, in order to get into these games amongst yourselves. Because believe me, I know the matchmaker, whether in quick play or competitive, can sometimes feel a bit intimidating, like walking down a dark alley. You don't know something bad is going to happen, but sometimes it does. And when it does, it's a bit terrifying. So uh, check out the Your Overwatch Discord to make use of that arcade mode and custom pickup games. It's a great way to play the game. You also get loot boxes while doing so, remember. You still get experience as long as you're not exploiting it. So it's a great way to play the game. You just don't gain rank, unfortunately. Moving on, Riviere made a post saying, I feel betrayed, making a post that it doesn't seem that the report system does anything to protect against toxicity. And Jeff Kaplan responds that they do look at their reports indeed. Please keep using the report functionality. We're also in progress of reviewing punishment policies with an eye towards getting more aggressive on toxicity and throwing and other bad behaviors. Apologies that people have treated you poorly. Now we've all had this issue, of course. Like I just said in my previous point, one way to avoid this is by playing with smaller sub-communities. I highly advise that. But also as well, it's a good opportunity to sort of give a PSA to the community to try to be cooperative with each other. Keep in mind as well, certain actions in game can sort of be rude in nature as well. If you go to the park to play a pickup game of basketball, there are some things you can do that aren't toxic verbally necessarily, but are sort of toxic player behaviors, like never passing the ball. It even has its own term, of course, being a ball hog. And for a player like myself, who has never developed a good shot, it's not a good idea to never pass the ball. In fact, when I play basketball, I mostly do pass, and that's the only strength I've ever had in my entire basketball career playing on the playground. I can't shoot, so I pass the ball more. With that being the case, make sure that you're not doing toxic behaviors yourself that aren't voice common nature. And I hope that a channel like ours can help illuminate players that are just new to this and don't really know the culture of the environment. But doing things like picking Symmetra on attack or the classic Widowmaker, I'll swap if I don't get a pick, is inherently going to tilt your team a little bit. Now, I ask that the team be cooperative and supportive in your teammates that are trying things in the game. But of course, remember, there's some things that you can do that are equivalent to being a ball hog. Basically saying, I'm the star player. Everyone make a team comp around me to win the game. And it could be inherently selfish. I'm not saying that this player did that, of course. I'm just saying... It's important to remember that there's a two-way street with all of this, and I think it's something that we all can improve on. Remembering, of course, the best way to deal with toxicity is the mute button. You can mute both their voice and their text chat, so you don't have to deal with any of their nonsense and move on with the rest of your day. Because, of course, if you stress a game company to be more aggressive on their report policy, it can be prone to abuse. If it becomes too sensitive, people can start getting banned for incredibly minor offenses which I don't think is a world we want to live in either. So instead, I advocate for the common sense and decency approach. Benefit of the doubt both ways. Please, everybody. Try to be courteous to each other, but also realize, especially when you're playing ranked, people want to win. So try to cooperate in order to do that and don't be a ball hog. Now, on to the next subject. Loot boxes for the anniversary event has been a major point of contention. Multiple forum posts have been talking about this across multiple platforms. The anniversary event skins have received mixed feedback in general, although I, we think they're pretty darn cool. They do look kind of different, as if they're from a different game, wink wink. But I like new stuff, even if it's a bit different and doesn't look like it thematically fits necessarily. But the problem is, since all of the skins are legendary and are worth 3,000 credits each, it's incredibly difficult to unlock them all. The anniversary event has become the most expensive event yet. Our buddy Force made a video about that. And that can frustrate a lot of players who don't have the bankroll to just buy tons of loot boxes. Even for ourselves, to be honest, we buy a lot of loot boxes every time, and we've even struggled to get every item. And I mean, with all the dance emotes, you're going to want all of those. 
And with so many legendary skins that are so cool across the board, you kind of want them all. The question is, how many stacks of loot boxes should it take in order to get them? But to that point, Jeff Kaplan did respond that Blizzard is listening. He says, I just wanted to acknowledge that we've been following the threads about the loot box rewards as they pertain to the anniversary events, other events, and loot boxes in general. The feedback and suggestions have been very helpful to us. We had a really great discussion yesterday about the feedback we've been hearing this week. While I don't have any immediate action items to report, I thought it was important for you to know that we are listening. Please feel free to continue your discussions about rewards, loot boxes, and anniversary cosmetic items in this thread. I'll ask the forum moderators to route all discussion on the topic to this thread. Thank you for sharing your thoughts with us. What do you guys think? Has the decadence of the cosmetic items gone too far? Do they cost too much for too small of a time frame? Blizzard does genuinely listen to feedback like this, which is important. And remember, it's their business model to utilize the income revenue from the cosmetic items in order to continue support on the game, which they have been doing throughout the entire year of Overwatch. And I think they've done a good job. But us as consumers, though, do have a right to say what we're willing to spend on what. And leaving forum posts like this is good, but the next step, of course, is speaking with your wallet. Fine, Blizzard, you got me. I won't get every cosmetic item. I'll only buy 100 loot boxes, not the necessary 150 that I think I need to get every single item from this anniversary event. Man, I really told them. Let me know your thoughts on all these different items from today's news roundup video in the comment section down below. We love to hear it. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. It really does help us out and lets us know that you're enjoying the content. If you haven't already, please hit subscribe because we upload each and every day. So you're gonna wanna hit the bell icon so that you get notified when our videos go live. Linked in the description, you can check out that Discord server I was talking about and our Twitter where we tweet out news, updates, and dank memes. That's been it for me. I've been Frito for your Overwatch. I'll see you guys next time.